my voice is like this deep. In the whole movie, I'm speaking with this voice. And mm -hmm. at some point, I completely forget about which was my real voice. And <laughs> I remember that I called a friend of mine and I was like, should we go to get a coffee? <laughs> wait, wait. Hello and welcome to EW's Awardist video series where we're interviewing the buzziest contenders for entertainment awards this year. I'm Joey Nolfi, digital writer at EW, and today I am joined by somebody who made the chaotic trash fire of a year that was 2020 feel a little less like swallowing a plastic baby. Star of the Amazon film Borat, subsequent movie film, please welcome Maria Bakalova. Hello, Maria. Hello, thank you so much for this intro. It was amazing. <laughs> of course. <So> <laughs> <laughs> I'm very excited to talk to you. This is one of my favorite performances of last year, and I thank you so much for being here. But this isn't all just absurd comedy. I mean, the story has a more serious thematic meaning at heart, right? I think the movie has some beautiful messages about equality, about how we should all treat each other with love and respect, and how women should not be subjugated by the patriarchy, how we should not change ourselves just to fit in the norma, just to fit around somebody's idea of what is beauty, what is um, supposed to happen with, especially with women. And this beautiful love story between a father and a daughter, and I think it's important. I'm here to give my daughter as a gift to someone close to the throne. I need a dress with real sexy peels. Uh, this is a bag. And I read that actually, contrary to a lot of what you're doing in this film, you have a bit of a straight-laced background. Like you were reading Dostoevsky as a kid in Bulgaria. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it was. So was there, you know, something, I guess, cathartic or liberating as an actor sort of wreaking havoc on the American public by unleashing this wild performance that, that lived inside you? Oh, I don't know. Maybe, um, maybe I've been always thinking about the idea of do everything what it's supposed to do right now. Don't think about the result. Don't think about the ending of the things. Just enjoy the process. And because we are here and now, I think that there is a lot of craziness inside of me. <laughs> I'm not sure that this is something. So, um, but I'm, I wasn't sure that I'm, I'm going to be able to like match Sasha because Sasha is one of a kind. And this is like his most famous character and the funniest character that I've ever watched in a cinema. And I was like, okay, the bar is really high. Am I gonna make it? Is it gonna happen? So I wasn't sure. I mean, I, w I knew that I'm gonna do whatever it takes to, to do the scene or to, to follow the script or to match Sasha, but how it, it was going to look like at the end, I of course I wasn't sure. I think a lot of the film draws its comedy from these juxtapositions of the earnest approach to your character and these unsuspecting Americans that you guys meet along the way. But were you surprised that men in the film reacted the way that they did? Like the guy in the store agreeing to let Borat send messages indicating that you'd be sold as a gift to Mike Pence or the guy nailing you into a box or the other person agreeing to sell a cage to put you in. Like, was that alarming or did it weigh on you emotionally knowing that men were so willing to participate in this and not question it? We're living in this a new world where everything's supposed to be possible and where we should all be like as example women should not be seen as sexual objects but at some places sometimes we still can see that and it's not something right I think mm -hmm. so I, I didn't feel comfortable I didn't feel like why so if that was a real person she would probably had this life judging by uh, her beliefs and her idea of that whatever her father tells her is the right thing. And being and seeing all of the supporters of this crazy idea, it is scary. It is scary. And I think that that's why the movie is important because through the, all of the silliness, we can show some issues that are not quite right, I think. Yeah. And it's supposed to make us think, make us act, not only react. So when the cameras were not rolling, was was it sort of heavy for you on the set to sort of be dealing with all of this and processing that there are people who are actually willing to participate in something like this? It's been kind of hard because you are there. We were shooting all the time. I mm -hmm. mean, it's like you're staying in character because you're not sure when it's going to be the, the next second when we're going to catch. <laughs> it's like, okay, he believed that you're to the, he believed that Borat, is your father and he's doing what he's supposed to do and it's like seeing this it's kind of confusing is it something wrong with me but because by seeing all of these people why why this is 
all around the world because it's not even only like in small countries uh, at the end of the world it, it's everywhere and it's mm -hmm. it it is scary so did you have to um prep or or do any sort of training to to learn to sort of stay in character when filming with these real people and and was there a particularly difficult moment for you to get through without breaking character i had some difficulties uh when i was with uh the amazing janice jones my baby mm -hmm. Because you're pretty and you're young. And any man should like you as you are. You shouldn't want to be anybody else but yourself. But if I have enormous titties, I don't have to learn how to swim. Your, your titties will not keep you from drowning. The, the production had like a break, a lunch break, and they were supposed to take me with them. But something happened and I just stayed with her the entire time. And I was like, okay 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 because something inside of me was like this woman is such an angel and i i was like should i keep trying to make her feel worried about tuta but i was like okay stay there stay there it's mm -hmm. gonna make uh, it's gonna make an impact on the world because we need examples like her we need to so i don't think we had a uh, like training but i was trying to see as much as possible from sasha and to learn from him because yeah. he was my mentor, my teacher, and he was like, when you think, when you, when you think that people are start getting suspicious or when you get uh, nervous or when you start laughing, just go deep inside the character and focus on what is the most important message of the scene. Mm -hmm. What are you gonna do uh, after that? How are you gonna go through this? And maybe Sasha trained me. I know that I personally would not have been able to keep it together during the Moonblood dance scene. Was that whole dance improvised or I, I can't believe that I'm even saying this, was it choreographed beforehand? Yeah, we worked with uh, the incredible, um, uh, the incredible uh, choreograph, uh, Catherine Burns. Mm -hmm. uh, and she, she teached us actually for a few lessons, how to like uh, perform, how to be, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know, in, in the same <laughs> moment because Sasha is that tall and I'm like in the middle of this mm -hmm. and he has longer uh, arms and legs and I'm like, okay, am I going to do it? Plus, I was like, okay, is this way or this way? So we trained with her and we, I remember that we trained like five minutes before we went inside this, this <laughs> bowl uh, and it was boiling hot. I was like, basically couldn't stop uh, sweating because it was extremely hot and, and we were with all of these clothes and Sasha was with the fat suit yeah. and crazy. I mean, uh, let's let's just talk about it. The, the liquid, we will call it in that scene. I'm curious as to how you kept it hidden during the ball up to that point without it like leaking. Like, did you have to sneak into the bathroom to apply it before the dance or something? What what was the process with that? I, I mean, I think, you know, it's the weirdest part because I have like, I've been had a, a black hole during this whole night because it's been so adrenalizing because uh, you have an, you have a feeling that you're in the middle of hypnosis because mm. you're just going through this and it's like poof, black hole after that nothing so I think I had it over me the whole night and then keeping it somehow because I don't <laughs> it it was wet it was I mean ugh. <laughs> Well, I mean, what was it like in that room after the camera stopped rolling? Because I imagine, because we see very briefly how people react to that in the moment. But when the camera stopped rolling, what was the atmosphere in that room like? I mean, the whole room was empty. People were like <laughs> devastated. What just happened to us? Because I, I don't know. Maybe there was, I don't know. That that was their temperament. But everybody was like crying. Somebody was screaming, and we we're like. There and there, I remember that there were two or three uh, younger from the young people that were still like, "Did that really happen today?" <laughs> After doing this movie, do you have a different opinion on American society and politics? To be honest, it doesn't even matter. Is it a small country or a huge uh, country like the United States of America? Uh, people are like that everywhere. We have good examples. Unfortunately, we have some that are not that good what what i think after that um i think the people were ready to stand up against misogyny whether there is uh like a normal person who is working at this like 
a pregnancy crisis center or mm -hmm. if it's a politic, it doesn't even matter. If you're a good person, you're going to be a good person. Right. We have an example like Jim and Jerry who believe that Hillary Clinton is drinking the blood from children, but they're actually feminists in some way. And they're the people who are telling him that this is not right. We are not mm -hmm. doing that. So it doesn't even matter how much you believe in some craziness. If you are able to keep the, the good in yourself and if you're ready to support people, if you're ready to be there for them and if you're ready to like teach them what is not so right and how we can make it better because that's who we are and mm -hmm. we're human beings and we're equal and we should support each other and we should love each other. <laughs> and yeah. One of the best examples of humanity in the film is Janice, the babysitter. But what was the first conversation that you had with her after you were allowed to sort of break character and connect with her after the movie was done, what were the things that you said to her in that first conversation? I was shaking and I wasn't sure is it appropriate to call her, but I wanted to call her and I was like, okay, I have to do it because I do feel a, like attached to her. I feel mm -hmm. moved for me as Maria because even in my real life, she made me think about because you have no idea but i was keep repeating that the air the earth is flat the earth is flat the earth is flat you're a man you you're not having a thing you're a man you're a man show me your women things like over and over and over again and sometimes the things that i was saying were offensive and right. she she was like keep giving me chances and chances and chances mm -hmm. and with love trying to teach me good things so made me think about how what kind of a person I want to be. I want to be like her. I want to be a supportive person. I want to be a person who is going to show people love. Um, so I was thinking about how to call her, what to say. And um, I called her after um, after the release. And I was wondering, um, is the first Thanksgiving going to be proper time? Because it's my first one here. And I was like, okay, if I want to celebrate it properly, I have to call the person that I'm thankful probably one of the most people that I'm thankful my entire life is a person and as an actress and I called her and I just um, wanted to thank her and I wanted to have a quick chat with her and I want to keep in touch with her. And um, yeah, I'm not sure that this is something typical, but I do love this person and I want her in my life forever. Yeah. And <clears throat> soon when this crazy virus is over and we all <sighs> survive, I definitely cannot wait the moment for, I'm go for when I'm going to see her. That's beautiful. I really love that you have that appreciation for her. She is, she does shine through the film as this really great example of humanity, despite all of these other things going on. And I think that that is really a powerful contrast to uh, some of the things that happen later in the film, um, like the plot climaxes with this Rudy Giuliani interview where he appears to stick his hands down his pants when you're alone in the hotel room together. And we see footage of you doing other interviews throughout the film in journalist mode. So did you actually have to go out and interview people like a real journalist to sort of gain credibility before his team agreed to do an interview with you? My first interview um, as a journalist was TPAT actually. Uh, where I was interviewed by One American News, or I interviewed them, I don't remember. But that was probably the end of February. So like two weeks later, COVID happened and everything got shut down. And But by the middle of COVID, the first lockdown, I was doing Zoom interviews with different people, maybe every single day, sometimes twice a day. And I was like, okay, now I know who am I? I think I'm getting there. And that's probably was the way that we they created it they established me as to believe in myself that I'm a journalist now and or at least I want to be a journalist one of those <laughs> one of the journalist uh, people so yeah so that scene I think it does carry a certain amount of risk to it I mean you had to have anticipated that it would be a sort of controversial one and I'm curious as to how you guys plan to approach that scene before filming and why you as an actor and as a person why did you feel compelled to go through with it and make sure that that scene happened and was just as ridiculous as it ended up being? It's kind of simple thing because at the beginning, I knew that this movie is going to be important. It's going to catch a lot of people's eyes, uh, most of the people's eyes, because it's crazy. Uh, it's like, a how to say it? It's like a way of revolution. It's mm. way of like, 
we're going to fight against misogyny. We're going to fight again uh, for equality. Um, so I was sure that people are kind of ready because we are living in this world and I, I'm meeting people more and more and more every single day where they're like, we, we need equality. We need diversity, even in a cinema. We need things that are going to make us more united, if that's the way to say it. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't that crazy surprised that people actually were like, yeah, that's, that's something wrong. We, we have to change that. Were you surprised by what it appears Rudy is doing? Or did you feel uncomfortable throughout the interview? Were there certain signals that he was giving you that were making you feel like, oh, this guy is trying to do something during the interview or any time setting up for that? Was there any point where you were like, this is going to go in a route that, you know, that is creeping? I mean, I don't know. I don't want to say it out loud what I think the movie is out. And uh, that's why I believe that the, the theme released it at that moment of the year and they had stronger messages than me about the American polit political system. Because again, I'm not American. I'm, I can more talk about the human side rather than the political mm -hmm. side. Mm -hmm. And what I actually think is more like, if, what if I was a man, if I was a journalist, would you start drinking with me in the middle of an interview? Will mm -hmm. you come with me in the bedroom? And, or you, now if I'm a female journalist, should I be treated as a sexual object? Is mm -hmm. there supposed to be a difference? Maybe this is, and this is more of a human behavior rather than a political thing because right. I'm not American. I've been here only for like two years. It is an improvised scene um, on both of your ends, but what was the plan going in? Was there a sort of framework that you and Sasha talked about as to how you were going to approach the interview and then escalate it afterwards into the, the bedroom or, um, like, how did you guys approach that scene before actually filming it? And what terms of what you wanted to do in that scene with Rudy? I knew that Sasha is going to be in the room, like hidden in the closet for <laughs> as long as it takes. We had an idea that it might be like super short. It might be like, okay, this is fake. Okay, this is crazy. Okay, you're trying to trick me. And to stop it or how to how to go from here or from there. Uh, but again, we're, we're dealing with real people. We have no idea how you're going to react how I'm going to react. If somebody asks me a certain question, you might imagine that somebody is going to start laughing or somebody is going to start screaming, but they're going to say like, God doesn't make accidents and things like that. And you're like, okay, just go with the flow. And, and maybe, maybe I was sure that we had an incredible security team that if something wrong starts to happen, Sasha is going to jump in, yeah. he's going to save me first. And then uh, I'm going to run away and, he's gonna run away and then from there the security is gonna handle everything uh but thankfully we had again we had an incredible team we had an incredible producers like monica levinson and aunt heinz and all of the people behind i'm sorry that i'm mentioning some only two okay names. that's but all right everything was extremely legally so i wasn't that carried that something really bad is gonna happen to mm -hmm. me. how difficult is it to do comedy like this it is difficult and I have to probably start there because um, my full background is only dramatic parts starting mm -hmm. from like teenage pregnancy to a teenager having a sexual affair with her real father or a teenager with a mental illness or teenager with food disabilities or teenager committing a suicide, things like that. And I was like, okay, the drama is the big thing. Now when I'm the first for the first time in a comedy and playing a funny character, it's a multi-layered character. I can see that it's much more harder because you still have to act. I mean, this project even more because you're in the real world and you still have to be the, the, the character, not, not, not me. Um, but it's like you have the same, the same feeling of how disappointed you feel, how um, happy you feel, but the, the problems are smaller and you, you have to make it believable somehow. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's like, okay, but we have a bunch of people that have no idea what is happening. We don't have like a person who is going to be like, stop, second take or boom, or something like that. <laughs> you have only one moment. So it's been difficult. It's been because from the first approaching of who is Tuta, uh, how she should speak like, uh, my voice is like this deep. In the whole movie, I'm speaking with this voice. And mm -hmm. at some point, I completely forget about which was my real voice. And <laughs> I remember that I called a friend of mine and I was like, should we go to get a coffee? Like, wait, wait, what is happening? And I was 
<clears throat> and because the project was so confidential, I wasn't even able to say that, oh, I'm playing this character that has this voice because she's 15 years old. And even in the way that Tute is speaking, she's speaking, uh, Borat is speaking Hebrew with uh, a few Polish words. Tute is speaking Bulgarian with also a few Polish words. Uh, and we have, um, Danny, who is the Romanian actor. And these are like a mix of different languages. Uh, we've been like rehearsing in English. And that was the moment where, where the incredible Jason was joining and he was like, we're gonna push this scene. We're gonna put this moment here. So we've been tr like rehearsing in English, working in front of the people in two different languages. But even in the languages, uh, even in Bulgarian when today speaking, in the beginning, she's speaking with more influenced uh, version of Romani language because mm -hmm. I'm, pressing more the letters ha and a ah, and it's like mm. tate, tate, where at the end she's like tate, tate, and it's like softer and with the english also and the way that they're walking because it's everything you have to create this character and you have to create it believable but at the same time it's like over the top it's hyperbolized I've always wanted to play characters that are showing how strong women are and how we can overcome anything so and having an important message like um, like the triumph of the human spirit and the support and the equality between us and how we we should love, we should be loved. I think the little prince said that and how we should <laughs> dream because art can make an influence on the real world. And through entertaining, if we're able to make people think, make, make them some kind of a better version of themselves, it's something powerful, it's something important, it's something that makes the most sense to me. And I want to be part of some projects that um, are important, that have strong messages that can make an impact on the world and to make the world a better place. Well, we certainly look forward to your career ahead and we are pulling for you for an Oscar nomination. But for now, Maria, that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for being here with me today. You have been so lovely. Thank you so much. Of course. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.